The motor car has influenced our modern era more than any other invention. There's no doubt that we're living in the age of the automobile, and the names of two men are inextricably linked to it. One is that of Karl Benz, a mechanical engineer in Mannheim, southern Germany, who realised his dream of combining an engine and a chassis to produce a powered vehicle. His motor velocipede, the world's first motor car, was patented in 1886. The other figure was Gottlieb Daimler from Stuttgart, Germany. He had the vision of designing a fast-running engine for powering vehicles of all kinds, on land, on water and in the air. Daimler's four-stroke gas engine was also patented in 1886. Amazingly, the two pioneers of the motor car never met, even though they lived barely 130 kilometres away from each other and worked on their inventions at the same time, each in his own way. The breakthrough of the self-propelled vehicle, the automobile, is their achievement. Yet others had had the idea before them. Wind carriages fitted with sails were designed to be propelled forwards by the power of the wind. Prior to these 15th and 16th century devices, there were plans for muscle power vehicles propelled by people pedalling inside. It wasn't until the 18th century that a passively transportable source of propulsion appeared in the form of the steam engine. Nicolas Cugnot built the first steam powered vehicle a monster conceived as a means of transport for France's glorious army. The test drive ended somewhat less than glorious. A few years later, smaller engines appeared which burnt gas, atmospheric engines. In 1860, Etienne Lenoir from Paris designed an atmospheric engine with two pistons in one cylinder. The first practicable internal combustion engine is even said to have survived a trip to the outskirts of Paris. Nicolas Auguste Otto added a fourth stroke to the three in the engine designed by Lenoir. To intake combustion and exhaust, Otto added a compression stroke. The four-stroke principle was a success. In 1876, Otto's stationary single-cylinder engine produced three horsepower at a speed of 200 revolutions per minute, roughly three times the output of the engines designed by Etienne Lenoir. Otto's Deutz gas engine factory in Cologne became Europe's biggest manufacturer of four-stroke engines, yet they still only functioned in a stationary position. Gottlieb Daimler, at the time a member of the board at Deutz, was also involved in the development of the four-stroke engine. He was assisted by a highly talented engineer called Wilhelm Maybach. Maybach and Daimler realised that the four-stroke engine was the long sought-after source of propulsion for vehicles. Otto's four-stroke principle was one of the discoveries of the century. Downward motion of the piston creates negative pressure in the cylinder. As a result, a mixture of air and fuel is drawn in through an inlet. As the piston moves back upwards, it compresses the mixture, which is then ignited. The explosion forces the piston downwards again. The piston now performs work. It turns the crankshaft one revolution. On the final stroke, the waste gases are expelled. eighteen eighty three twelve months previously daimler had left the deutz gas engine factory to set up in business on his own in stuttgart daimler invested his entire fortune in pursuing one goal he wanted to make the four-stroke engine lighter and more compact for mobile use to increase the specific engine output as well instead of gas daimler used liquid fuel and a new hot tube ignition this gave his relatively small engine an output of one horsepower. The 
petrol was atomized in a surface carburetor and mixed with air before being compressed in the cylinder and combusted. Despite what many a person at the time thought, in 1885 it wasn't the devil who was making Stuttgart's vineyards unsafe, but Gottlieb Daimler with his motorised horse carriage. In Mannheim, at roughly the same time, Karl Benz had almost completed his technological masterpiece, without having even the slightest notion of Daimler's work. Benz also improved the four-stroke internal combustion engine, but in contrast to Daimler, he employed an electrical buzzer ignition which used a sparking plug and enabled an impressive engine speed to be attained. In July 1886, Benz test drove his three-wheeled vehicle for the first time. With an elegant, lightweight, tubular steel frame, it was far more than just a horseless carriage. This was the world's first real motor car. The moment it was completed, this prototype was ready for series production. A brilliant achievement by Carl Benz. In late 1887, his Mannheim engine factory began manufacturing motor cars. In Stuttgart, Daimler followed suit a short time later. He too had a motor car in his production program. The antiquated looking wooden motor carriage was clearly derived from the horse-drawn carriage. It was driven by a 1.1 horsepower engine mounted in front of the rear axle. appeared in 1893. Named Victoria, it developed a whole three horsepower. But in Germany at the time, hardly anyone was impressed. Customers were few and far between. Motoring was regarded as unseemly. France, however, was quite a different story. There, Benz and Daimler recorded impressive sales. The world's first car race took place, Paris to Bordeaux and back. Steam engines also took time, but they were totally outclassed by the new petrol engine vehicles. The winner over the 1,200 kilometer distance was a car powered by a Daimler engine. Peugeot in France became the world's third car manufacturer. It was quickly followed worldwide by other vehicle producers, many of whose names are virtually unknown today. By now, the flanking motor car had become socially acceptable in Germany, too. Even His Imperial Majesty Kaiser Wilhelm II deigned to turn up in a motor car to inspect his troops. If anyone deserved to be called the car king, it was Henry Ford in America. Ford, who employed thousands of workers at his Detroit plant, revolutionized car production. Comprising some 5,000 individual parts, at the turn of the century, the motor car was one of the most complex of all industrial products. It was still manufactured largely in workshop style, but the growing market called for more economical production methods. assembly line for manufacturing his Model T. The effect was dramatic. Ford was able to reduce by 80% the time taken to assemble a chassis with axles, springs and engines. to own a car, but those who did own one felt like royalty. By the 
time World War I broke out, the motor car had become much lower and more elongated in appearance. The standard open version predominated. It had the engine at the front and the drive at the rear. But things changed as designers experimented with various possibilities. With some models, the drive was shifted from the rear to the front axle. This resulted in a favorable load being placed on the driving wheels by the weight of the engine, and especially in the case of the transverse engine, saved a tremendous amount of space. Even though cars were gradually becoming more and more stylish, the original principle developed by Daimler and Benz remained virtually unchanged. One principal change came in the 50s when frame construction gave way to integral body construction. Certain parts of the sheet metal body were designed as supporting elements and the engine and the chassis attached directly to the body. Since then, millions of cars have been built in this way. Thirty years after its birth, the motor car had fundamentally changed everyday life in a way its inventors could never have imagined. The motor car, the dream of the age, but a dream by no means everyone could turn into reality. An office worker could scarcely afford to buy even a middle-class vehicle. Ferdinand Porsche set out to design the car for everyone. Commissioned with the task by Adolf Hitler, in the 1930s he developed the People's Car. It was to cost just 990 marks. Millions of people invested their hard-earned savings in the construction of the People's Car plant in Wolfsburg, but they never got the car Hitler had promised them. It was only after the war that the Germans motored into their economic miracle with the People's Car, and on holiday too, preferably to Italy. Volkswagen, a symbol of West Germany's economic miracle. The age of mass motorization began, and it gave rise to totally new challenges. The safety of the car's occupants became one of the most important design features. The latest safety concept is the airbag which inflates at lightning speed to protect front seat passengers in the event of a crash. Like the ABS system, which stops the wheels locking when the brakes are applied, it relies on modern electronic systems. These also control exhaust gas purification, the catalytic converter, and the combustion processes in the engine to ensure as pollution-free running as possible. With the Earth's oil reserves limited, research into new propulsion systems is being stepped up but electric propulsion is still not contested. As far as hydrogen propulsion is concerned, practical problems such as filling the tanks still have to be solved. There's an urgent need for solutions. With over 400 million cars on the roads worldwide, the burden on the environment from noise, pollution and energy consumption is becoming more and more serious. how much easier motoring was for our grandfathers. They were able to experience driving a sheer fun at a time when the firms of the two inventors of the motor car, Daimler and Benz, were merging to create an automobile company which today is one of the biggest in the world. 